Hello boys and girls. Clown Alex is back again with an apology and eating humble pie. My previous video was about uh, putting threads into MDF using a nut setter with uh, rivnuts. Nut setter much like a pop riveter, rivnuts like a pop rivet. They sort of work on the similar principle whereby you expand, drag the uh, back bit through, expand it and lock it into narrow pieces. What I wanted to do at the start of the video, and I wasted a lot of time on that, is to try and see if these uh, rubber inserts that I bought would work in uh, solid timber, and if they didn't, will it work in MDF? Well, I tried it with solid timber and made a total fool of myself. But that's because what I was trying to do is I was trying to lock it in using the nut setter. Um, however, you don't do that. All you really do is push the nut or the uh, riv nut into the hole, grab a bolt and do it. And it by default will expand and lock in there. And it'll give you a bloody good lock. Also works for 13 mil, half an inch 13 mil. The 35 64, the hole is just too big and it goes straight through. Before I go into that, um, oh no, I'll, I'll come back to that later. What I thought I'd try is see what its holding power was. I'll get rid of this only so I can get a nice flat surface. I cut a piece of, uh, oh by the way for all it's worth I use 6mm hardware. The bolts I use are 6, the nuts or uh, rib nuts are 6. I cut a quarter inch uh, hole in here just so it's an easy slip through rather than have to thread it through. Um, and slap one of these rubberized nuts in there. Tightened it up. This is on a fairly light setting of number three, but I do it until it starts to ratchet. And I can assure you I'm exerting quite a bit of pressure. Look, I, I don't know, I haven't measured it, but by God, um, it's certainly more than about uh, 10, 20, 20, 30 maybe. No, I don't know. But I'm using quite a bit. And if you look closely, while it seems to be separating... It actually isn't, it's only the rim of the rubber that separate whoops separating the two pieces. So and that's it. So I was quite happy with that. Um, I was impressed. Now when it comes to MDF, the same principle I used here could work by having laminated MDF because I tried it on this three mil piece of steel, put it through, drilled a, came from, you know, I think half an inch hole, put that in there, and again, another one of these little units, put it through, and that won't move, that's, ex you can see how, you might be able to notice how much it's, hang on, let's see what, what you can see how much it's expanded and that is just not going to pop out. Now, I was thinking, you know, where the hell would you use this? Well, suddenly now I realise you can use these, but for a start, 3mm, you might get some thread into it. But if you're looking at sheet metal, there's no way known you're going to get a thread into it. Now, if you can get to the back of it and put a nut on, not a problem. But if you can't get to the back of it, or you put the nut on and the nut slips and then you can't get to the back of it to hold it down, these are ideal. Especially the rubber ones. These are good because they'll lock into place and once locked you won't move it anyway. But with the rubber ones they're good. You can do it up. At the end of the day, you can undo it. 
and bloody reclaim your little rubberized ring and reuse it elsewhere or leave it there and throw it out with the whatever. Anyway, I was looking for an excuse to use these rubberized things. Well, now I've got a perfect way, uh, place of using it. The only thing is uh, I don't recommend using the black rubberized rings on black metal because you'll be spending half a day looking for a hole. For the hole that you've done. Anyway, that's bullshit. Uru, I've proved my point. I apologise for my mistakes before. Um, Uru, keep safe. Have a good weekend. Merry Christmas, Easter, Yannicka, whatever. Bye.